Welcome to episode four of Wild Angle. Obligatory West Ham symbol there. Um, it's sunny and warm, which is fantastic. And I'm just sitting outside the house in our front garden, which is a bit of concrete, looking at the wall, which is gonna feature very, very heavily in this week's program. Um, a bit of honesty right now. Um, after last week, I was a bit hacked off at finding stuff because it was such a high with the owls and I just couldn't find stuff around. And I got a bit angsty being indoors for a couple of days. And Susie just said to me, look, you've, you've, you've seen that wren outside. Why didn't you get outside and do it? And it's just the boot that I needed to get up my backside to get out. It's very easy for all of us to be complacent right now, right? Very, very easy. You mustn't. You must keep pushing yourselves and get out because as the Queen said the other day, we will meet again. We will get through this. What an amazing speech that actually was. And just incredible. So today's episode has a slightly different focus. Again, it's from the local patch and from it's from my car that's literally <laughs> 10 feet there. <laughs> Most of it's on that. But we've also got some image critiques from you of my pictures that I shot. Some of the best pictures I've shot in ages, some of the really lovely atmospheric stuff, but also for some lovely clients that have sent some stuff in. So thanks a lot. And without further ado, here's the little film we made for you. Okay, team, um, here I am in my hide. My hide's a car. In fact, I know a song about that. I love driving in my car. <laughs> it's not quite a Jaguar. <laughs> Rouse Dad Dancing and 80s Madness Classic. And when this nightmare ends, um, Madness will be touring and let's all go and see them because it's great to jump around and sing to songs that you know from the 80s. Anyway, I digress. A car makes a fabulous hide and all of my career I've used a car to photograph, which was hilarious when I had a sports car, but I still went off-road in it. Now I've got a Land Rover, it's much better. Um, lots of species are easy to approach via a car because they don't see your ugly mug. Um, also hide your scent. It also allows you to line up the light as you would want it. Um, and for species like roe deer, I've used the car for hares, Barn Owl, Little Owl, oh, Snowy Owl, there's all kinds of things around the world and in the UK that I've used the car for. It's a fantastic hide, particularly for shy animals if you've got to wait some time. So what I'm here for are wrens, and I love wrens. I've always loved wrens, and I've always done really, really badly at photographing them. I mean, terribly at photographing them. I got one picture last week in the hedge over there that was pretty dire of one singing sitting in my um, kitchen having a coffee when I hear the wren really singing outside and really going for it I realized that there were not actually one wren but two wrens okay because this stone wall that's opposite my house is the middle of two territories and at this time of the year the wrens are of course building nests and the male wren builds several nests and then the female comes along and chooses which one she wants they're singing to attract the female so it means on this wall as long as i sit wait and prepare from the safety of the car which is by the way right next to the house i don't even have to walk 10 seconds to get into my hide um i can hopefully get some pictures of the wren okay uh so without further ado Let's show you how to set up and get going. All right, so Wren Photography 101. In fact, it's Car Photography 101, really, in a nutshell. I'm going to do it very, very quickly. First things first, you need something to balance your lens on, okay, and camera. So this is my beanbag. I've got a double wall beanbag. It's full of chickpeas. Try and get something heavy in it. Normally, I have a much longer beanbag, but I left that in India because I thought I wouldn't be here on lockdown. So shove it on the window. Give it a bit of a whack to put your lens in the middle. Now, one camera, one lens. If you've got a lens foot like that, put it, twist it so that it's on the side because then when you put your lens on the bean bag, it will hold your lens against the side of the bean bag. Some of you may have a focus ring that when you move the lens on the bean bag, it moves the focus ring. So if so, you may want to put the foot on the bottom and put the foot like that straight onto the bean bag so that the camera sits a tiny, tiny bit above the bean bag, okay? So it doesn't snag the focus ring. I don't worry about that. Um, I'll just shove it on there like that. Now, um, a lot of species that you have, of course, are gonna be shy and they're not gonna wanna see the ugly mug. So you can either shove this over your head in the car like that, which is a bit impractical. You can fight trying to get it 
um, in all of these places like this and oh which is a comedy that I wouldn't have. Or the easiest thing to do is to open the door, making sure you don't tip your valuable camera out. Get a bit of the net like this, okay? And holding your camera, trap it in the door. And there you go, you've got a very, very nice, let's just switch it on. Where are you? Somewhere there, there's the wall. Yeah, there you go, there's the wall right there. Okay, so you've got a very, very nice, way of, of uh, protecting yourself from being seen. It will allow whatever you're photographing to get used to you and eventually you can get rid of the net because it is slightly annoying looking through it. But if you're doing stuff like deer and hares and mammals and stuff like this, you need that net and you might even on the other side of the car, on the passenger side, you may need to cover that completely with not a net, something that's not see-through like an old shirt or a bit of black sheet or something because an animal will look straight through and see your silhouette which is absolutely rubbish and will cause it to run for the horizon. Now I've been photographing here for several days and I have absolutely loved it in all kinds of light conditions and I've got some really good pictures, uh, stuff I'm really happy with so without further ado here is the fruits of my labour and you will see that it's absolutely worth putting the effort into getting your car set up perfectly right. Here you go. Well, Sean and I hope that you enjoyed that. He enjoyed making it, or not really doing a lot, and sunbathing in the back, uh, but maybe it was useful for you, and I really hope it was, uh, as isn't everything we do. Um, now, a few of you techie-minded lot uh, are gonna want a bit of numbers and a bit of help, so I'm just gonna do a very quick review of five pictures that were in that shoot. Uh, this one is just one of my, the first time I got this, this is the first real good singing one I got. I was like, oh my God. ISO 800, two thousandths of a second F4. Two thousandths, you need a fast shutter speed. They're very, very fast birds. They don't sing for long, they're flighty. They come, they land, they sing, they go. They don't sit there singing for half an hour so you can get it. They're very fast. So I would pre-focus on the rocks, get your autofocus so it's in roughly the same area as where the bird's gonna land, or well, that's what I did anyway. Then I moved my point up so it's just above the rocks, but I didn't press the shutter button so it locked onto the background and I waited. I put one eye at the viewfinder, one eye looking out. As soon as it landed, I was right onto it and I was shooting straight away on silent mode, of course. This, when it came out, I couldn't believe it. It's the first really amazing singing one that I got. Singing his heart out, wings out. I put a little bit of shadow highlight underneath the wing just to uh, brighten it in post. That's all, lovely composition, lots of space, just works. And you've got to give them space. They've got to sing into space. <laughs> this guy's singing right at me. Focus point is on the eye. If you focus on the back of the beak, that's the back of the head. So the front of the beak will be um, completely out of focus. So you're focusing on the eye roughly. Um, and then yeah, F4 to 5.6. I love it because it gets this really good gobby shot. Um, and they do sing at you. They twist often, which is why you need the fast shutter speed to be able to freeze them in motion. Lots of nice space around that one. Okay, that was in the morning. I started to photograph in the afternoon because you know I'm obsessed with backlit, aren't I, Sean? <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, so yeah, this is a, a nice backlit shot taken about half an hour before the sunset. Um, it's a bit irritating with the rock in the background. I did think of taking a sledgehammer to it, <laughs> but then another day the rain could land on it and it'd be even more of an epic shot. <laughs> That's coming in a minute. Uh, but even so, this is really great with the wings out, with the light coming through the wings, 
just enough light reflected off the car windows, believe it or not, on the side of the Wren. That's one of the benefits of shooting from a car. You can get that side reflection late at night. It really, really helps put a little bit of detail on. Just the wings in the air, it's just magic. The trick is not to over-process this and not to put too much color in, so it's a balance. This is about minus 0.7 exposure compensation. All the other numbers, exactly the same. So minus 0.7, because I want to retain some detail on the Wren, but as we get later, this is getting right towards sunset now, the last race, the sun is right behind the Wren. We're down at about minus 1.7, okay? Because I just want to get the outline of the Wren perfectly uh, perfectly uh, defined with it singing into space. They've got to sing into space. So when you compose your picture, you want it singing into the majority of dead space on the picture, not singing out of the picture. Nice bit of foreground at the bottom. Um, I've, I've not really done much darkening. That was done in camera. A little bit on post, uh, just to give it a hard edge and just to take the blacks down. And that was it, literally two minutes. That's a lovely picture and I love it, but this is my favorite. Ta-da! Do you like that? Sean, Sean's getting animated. Sean, what well done, mate? Are you gonna fall over? No. Uh, I love this, look at that, wings up, singing. It's not really singing its heart out. I couldn't make it sing its heart out, but it's doing a good job. Uh, minus 2.3 stops this one, so right down, because uh, I wanted to have the wings a bit more golden and not with the silver effect. Um, and I didn't want any rocks in it at all, so I've just got the leading edge of the rock coming down. It's a very atmospheric picture. A lot of you might prefer the earlier ones where you can see the rain, that's great. I have my style and I have my own vision and style and this for me is the pinnacle of a very hard week's work and I hope that you love it. So get out there and show me what you can do. Well, Sean and I would like to thank you for all of the pictures you've sent in for critiquing, which has been great. Um, we're probably gonna do a special show on it because there are so many, um, but it's not gonna turn into a, a Photoshop class. One of the things I'm not gonna do is teach Photoshop because there's an awful lot better people on YouTube and stuff that do it. And my way of doing it is very graphical with a graphics tablet and very 1960s. So you may want to learn different ways of doing it. And I suspect most of you use Lightroom anyway, which is not something I've ever used or ever want to. All right. so. These pictures that you see, uh, we were sent them in by Ian and Anita, who came with me on a tiger trip and did really, really well. We had a really cool time. And they've said, can you have a look at them? Can you tell us how to improve them or tell us what we do, etc., uh, etc." Et uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with the first one. So here's the one that Anita sent me. And the product I'm using, by the way, on the screen is called Photo Mechanic, which is an excellent product for keywording, editing, comparing, color coding, uh, culling and then as a central point of control when looking at your pictures. I've used it for, well, ever since it was written, which was a long time ago. It's a great product. All right, so this, this picture, what I look at instantly, um, it's a nice composition actually. It's on the left hand side of the frame, uh, right hand side of the frame, I should say, the center line going down. I quite like that. Um, I kind of like the bushes on either side holding it. Um, the thing it's not got going for it is the light because it was quite misty that morning, I have to say. Um, and as I find with a lot of people's pictures, contrast is the issue where you're almost afraid to give it some contrast and you need to give a lot of digital SLR pictures decent amounts of contrast um, to get them to jump from the screen and to get them to punch. So all the raw materials are here. It's nicely in focus, nicely composed, etc., etc. All I need to do is do a bit of jiggery pokery and that's what I came up with, okay? So uh, I'm not gonna show you how, because it's very simply load it in Photoshop, just squash the levels, and that was it basically. Give it some contrast, um, and just give it a bit of life. Um, I don't wanna use the sky excessively. I'll pop back, there you can see. Do you wanna see both together? I knew you would. Right, let's see both together, and this one. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so you can see, look, I got rid of a lot of the sky uh, there, because uh, it didn't really need it, it didn't have anything to it. Um, used a little bit of a grad at the top, but nothing much. So very simple, and uh, really all the raw materials were already there when I came to do it. Okay, let's have a quickie look at Ian's then, right. That's Ian's process one, okay? And um, I can see here, it's a very difficult shot. Lesson, don't eat lunch before you do this. It's a very difficult shot to take, right? Because uh, our light was absolutely horrible. It was right above us, slightly behind. Oh my God, it was just harsh. The water was this horrible muddy brown. Everything was against us getting any shots at all. All the rocks, we were bouncing along. 
But Ian's done a great, great job in uh, getting the tigers nice and sharp and in focus, etc., uh, etc. Et I just need to do some stuff to it. So um, Ian sent me the raw. Uh, so the first thing I did was drag the raw into Capture One, do a few little changes on it, load it into Photoshop, uh, uh, straighten it, uh, do some painting in, get the colours nice, get the balance nice, get the background nice, and then finally uh, you get to this point, which is the final picture, which I think um, is a big improvement because you can actually see the detail on the tiger. And all I did there was some contrast stuff, painting out the highlights, etc., etc. You have to realise that if the light's not there, the light's not there. And sometimes, you know, when you go out, if you go out in the middle of the day. You can't expect to take great wildlife pictures because it's impossible. Um, the light is above, you know. So you need low light for the best effect when you do the least processing. So if you get out early in the morning and late in the evening, then the pictures that you take will need far less processing than anything you take during the harder light hours um, in the middle of the day. Um, so thanks, Ian and Anita, for sending me those two pictures. They were absolutely great, brilliant. I hope that's helped. And the rest of you, there will be a lot more critiques coming along now. Um, so if you've got any to send in, please do. All right, later. Well, that was the end of Wide Angle episode four, and you can hear the wren was just singing in the background there as if to say goodbye. It's the right-hand wren up there. Um, I learned um, not to eat soup as well 10 minutes before you do these links because right now I am uh, burping all the time <laughs> and can constantly having to stop this. Um, hopefully that you've learned a lot from seeing what I've done with the car and stuff. You may not have wrens, but you may have goldfinches or something else or even blue tits or whatever in your front garden that you can photograph from the car. And just remember, as the Queen said the other day, we will meet again. We will get through this. So when we're on the other side, using your car as a hide is a big technique and I will do some more stuff on it, I promise. But I just wanted to keep it focused on to, you know, keep it real on what I'm doing here. Keep it light and keep it fun. Um, should do that as well for all West Ham fans out there. Uh, probably means we're not going to be relegated this season now, which is yes. Uh, right, so next week, well, a bit of a water theme. So I'll leave that as a surprise for you. Again, local patch. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the wonderful comments. Please get your friends to subscribe. It really does help. It takes a lot of effort to put this together and thought. There's the wren again. It's just, I just love it. It's out here. Um, but it's so worth it. I'm really enjoying the distraction and I'm really enjoying the engagement with you as well. So I'm glad that you're finding it really, really useful. So until next week, be safe and just remember people's lives depend on it. Thanks for everything you're doing and we will get through this and we will be together again.